I haven't talked very much about my studio space. This is where I usually shoot my videos. Uh, it's just in the basement. Um, I'm renovating my setup. So I've had, you know, my red desk sitting here, a uh, light over here, maybe a hair light back there. That's my shelf with just a bunch of hardware and cables and, and lenses and stuff on it. Uh, what I want to do though is have something that's a little slightly more permanent. So I, I have this this white backdrop thing that I've had draped over the top of my studio space right here, just on some stands. But um, I don't know. It's just kind of it, it looked temporary and it, it worked well. It was probably my best lighting setup. I've never been really happy with my lighting setup in this space. I think it's partly to do with the color, like with the floor has this kind of a tan, and the ceiling is kind of a tannish burlap color. And you can see the walls are like this blood red. It took like seven coats of paint to get that to show up like that. But anyway, I like the color scheme for the room. It's just not great for doing video in. So what I'm doing is um, I have this frame. It's made to be for a, a home theater screen. Uh, I'm going to mount these impact um, baby plates onto it, screwed onto my frame. It's got a screw so you can put this right onto a stand. It's pretty cool. Um, to make it a little wider, I'm adding this piece of plywood, and so I'll put a, another stand, I've got it here, I mean plate, another plate like that, and then uh, just one stand here, one stand on this side, and I'll have this screen up in the air, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm still going to drape that white backdrop over the top of it, so I have something to reflect light against, and that's how I get my kind of my soft light over my workspace, and I have a new desk. This is uh, one of those rising standing desks. Pretty nice one, made in America. Um, it was my office desk. I got another one just like it, but bigger, so now I can use that one out here, which I think would be nice. It looks nice. Um, I think it's better to have black desk, so when I show off something like, you know, here's my, my Z cam, then I won't have like a super crazy red something beneath it or like a white desk or something. I think a black color is probably a better setup for that. So that's what I'm doing. I will report back when I've got this up and mounted. This is one of those impact, um, I think they call it a baby plate. It has a 5 8 inch receiver here with a knob to tighten it down. It's a nice plate, uh, made in China. I'd love to get a Matthews brand, but they're about twice the price. And I didn't like, I think something about the plate, how it was laid out, I didn't like it as much. Maybe it was smaller or, or something. So. Um, this will be fine. Um, got some nice thick screws to go into this quarter or three quarter ply. Uh, always pre drill your holes, even on plywood, and uh, I'm going to clean that up, mount that, and then I'll have this side finished. All right, progress update. I've got the, uh, what do I call this? The screen, I guess, the overhead screen mounted on stands. I've got two different stands. I've had this one for a long time. I used it when I was doing location sound to hold my, my boom mic. And I can just kind of show you how this looks. So the plywood is attached to the screen and it just extends out the stud so that uh, I get a little wider of a distance between the two sides. This other stand, oh my gosh. This other stand is a, a roller. It's I think American brand really nice it's aluminum so it's lightweight uh, all the sections glide up and down really easily I got those on I got two of these on eBay for like 220 bucks or something really good deal super happy with them so yeah all I gotta do is tighten this knob and just because I have them centered it's just this thing's just pretty solid so all I have to do is toss this backdrop on top and raise it up then I start putting the rest of my uh, my equipment out here. All right, it's looking like something. So you can see I've got it slammed all the way up to the ceiling. I've got uh, sandbags, actually lead shot bags on each one. Those look small, but those are 25 pounds each because they're full of lead shot. So no problem holding up something this size. This actually isn't that heavy. I built this out of redwood um, because it's dimensionally pretty straight. It doesn't curve a lot and it's also very lightweight. So for a screen, it was a really good choice. So I'll show you, I've got this Aperture 300X. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when I flip this on. That's 100% uh, tungsten, since the other lamps in my room here are tungsten. 
So you see how it kind of bounces. It's kind of like a vertical book light kind of a setup. Instead of being horizontal, it's vertical. And so it gives a nice soft light to everything. So that, and I can add some, some bounce cards if I need to. I have, usually have a fill on this side of something. I'm always changing up my lighting setup though. It's never the same every time I shoot, unfortunately. Once I get one I like, though, I'll probably stick with it. So in addition to uh, being a nice bounce light, this thing also gives me some acoustic isolation so I don't get that bounce off the ceiling. Um, it'll bounce off the desk as is, but uh, this helps a bunch. I realized when I took it down for the last couple of videos that I shot, I, I could tell that the audio didn't sound as clean because I was getting reflections off of the ceiling. So this helps a bunch for that as well. Uh, I thought I'd show you that this backdrop is a Westcott High Key White. I think it's a 10 foot by 20 foot. It kind of has a texture on one side. The back side is just this kind of a polyester generic kind of a look. I've got it kind of folded up so that it fits better on top of this thing. And if you haven't heard of the Aperture uh, 300X, this is their bicolor light. It's kind of the, the equivalent of their 120D Mark II as far as brightness, but since it's bicolor, um, it's about as, not, I don't think it's as bright as the 120D. Um, it's really nice though, of course. Um, easy to adjust. I like how just on and off. If you put two batteries on it, you can run it off battery power. Uh, it has some effects built in. I got this used from B&H. I think this thing sells for like $1,200 now. I got it for like $832 used. It was new in the box. Like it still had the, the seal on the on the zipper so you couldn't open it up so everything was brand brand new so I basically got a new one for like a third off or something it's pretty sweet oh and I thought I should mention the reason why I bought the bicolor one is because I have some old school um, tungsten filaments these are Fresnel's made by uh, Altman so I have two of these 300 what are these 150s 300s um, there's another one there and then I have uh, I think it's a 650 and then I also have an old school RE1K. Um, they're not ideal because you know they are hot lights, so they physically get hot to the touch. Like I can't, I couldn't touch them when they're on. I have to use gloves to adjust them. They have old school uh, scrims. I know, sorry, the lighting is poor. But they have these scrims, and I'm using you know tin foil to uh, block off the light. But you know, I, I'm using what I have. That's kind of the rest of my, my gear kind of strewn about here. Um, another stand. I got another one of these. So I had, I bought this uh, Flotec, the Sockler Flotec with the FS8 head. Really, really nice stuff. The Flotec legs are the way to go. Uh, and I was watching on eBay. I've got a saved uh, search for Flotec. And this one popped up with the new active head. So this has, so the active head has this lever and you just flip it and you can change the, you know, move the position down here at the ball and then just lock it back down. And it doesn't have that shaft that usually sticks way down with the handle. You don't deal with that at all. So this thing can go all the way to the ground, like, you know, this far from the ground and it's no big deal. So you just adjust it with this. Whereas my FS8, this one, it still has the handle that runs down here. It sticks all the way down to here. So I can't, I can't have this thing any lower than say here to the ground. And sometimes you're getting those really, really low shots, like uh, on the beach or something. Um, it's really nice to have that. Plus, that's a lot faster than using the knob that's under here. This thing can be a little hard to get your arm and your hand in there and turn it, especially with the legs in the way. Uh, the heads are really, really similar. I think that's the equivalent. That's the Active 8, I think. Yeah, it says Active 8. This says FSB 8. Really, really similar. Um, this one has some really cool features though. This is kind of an impromptu review, I guess. I don't know, maybe I should make a full review on, on the comparing these. The sticks are the same between them, but this head, it's a little different. This top is smaller. They're both the side load where you can I just tip the camera down. Here, I'll just show you. So you just tip it, boom, and then lock it. And it's set on there. So again, you've got this, this lever here. Flip it up to see how I can just move it and drop it down. It's locked. The cool part is it has a bubble level, lights up, but it has a side view so that you can, if it's way high up, you can still see whether it's level or not. And also it has these illuminators. 
watch that again. Here and here, that let you see where you're at. If you're in the dark, you can see the numbers on your adjustments here for all your knobs. Really, really cool. I think there's even one kind of showing down here. So they've really thought this head out. Um, so give it up to Sockler for uh, really building some nice stuff. Hey, I know that was kind of a random video. I actually shot that like a month or two ago. Um, I've just been busy with life and, and uh, other things like the cosplay music videos on my other channel. So I am working on things, just not tech things right now. So I appreciate your patience. I will be back with uh, more videos coming up uh, with some Canon FD lenses. So stay tuned.